Part of growing up is learning more about how the world works, and one of the ways you learn is by experimenting, trying stuff, because why not? I don't know what'll happen, and besides, it could be fun. So it's only natural to look back at stuff you did when you were younger and had less experience and think, why would I do that? Knowing what you know now, it seems dumb, but you wouldn't know what you know now if you hadn't tried what you did then, which is mostly my way of justifying the dumb stuff I did when I was a kid so you don't judge me. Because I didn't know any better, okay? I was just a sweet, innocent child trying to find his way in a cruel and confusing world. Some of the dumb stuff I did as a kid wasn't that big of a deal, and is honestly kind of adorable. Like one time, I got a cardboard box, I brought it to the top of the stairs, climbed in, and slid down. Like a roller coaster, made of cardboard. Five-year-old Tim Tom didn't know what would happen once he ran out of stairs. However, thanks to past Tim's sacrifice slash experiment, we now know that the box will explode, and the sole passenger will indeed smack the concrete floor of the basement, and it will hurt, and much like a baby bird slash fighter pilot, he will lay there in shock before shouting, Mayday! Because that's what you're supposed to shout when you're in trouble, apparently. Speaking of stairs, when I was younger and smaller, I would climb stairs on all fours. I'd lean over and go into animal mode. Something about it just felt faster, and I think it's probably a more efficient way to climb stairs when you're little, you know? But the thing is, I only lived in a house with stairs for about a year when I was five, so I built that habit when I was young. But then we moved to a place that didn't have stairs, which meant I never really had the opportunity to outgrow it. As far as my body was concerned, the best way to climb stairs was still like a dog. It just came naturally. So years later, when I was a teenager, I remember going over to to a friend's house for the first time, and when we went up the stairs to his room, my muscle memory kicked in and I clambered up the stairs with all the coordination of a greased up baby deer. Both him and his mom were like, what, uh, what you doing there? And sure, that's kind of embarrassing, but old habits die hard, so as much as I knew it looked weird for me to rumble up the stairs like that, I probably only had one or two opportunities a week to break that habit and practice walking like a normal person. So every time I went over to his house, I would go back on autopilot and continue to climb the stairs like a total weirdo. I'm not the only one that climbs stairs like that, right guys? Guys? Okay, I'll just be over here if you need me. One time I pooped in the bushes. Don't worry, this one also happened when I was five. I'm not going around pooping all willy-nilly as an adult. Go over to a friend's house. Excuse me, could you point me toward your shrubbery? So I was at a playground, and there was a huge bush that had this little tunnel through the middle, just big enough for a little kid to walk through. And on either side of the tunnel, the bush had what I can only describe as two tiny rooms in it. For some reason, the boys on the playground were taking turns going into the bush and peeing in one of the little rooms. And at this point, you can probably guess the rest of the story, I needed to go number two. And I figured that if one of the rooms was for peeing, then the other must be for pooping. I will remind you that I was only five. A five-year-old without TP. This is where my memory of the situation goes about as fuzzy as an analog TV in a blizzard. I don't know if I admitted to my mom what happened, or if I just pulled my pants up and dealt with it later. Either way, the whole ordeal was very uncomfortable. But at least that time, I was the only victim of my stupidity. If you don't count my mom having to put up with a smelly boy. Another time, and again, I was only five and couldn't possibly have known better, I saw someone do that classic magic trick in a movie where they rip a tablecloth out from under a bunch of plates and silverware and everything stays in roughly the same place. That's because of a little thing called... Inerta. But I didn't know physics when I was a kid, so when I tried, I failed to properly account for several variables. Here's how it went down. One of my friends came over to play, and I was excited to show off a new trick I saw on the TV. But I didn't have a tablecloth or anything to put on it, so I looked around the house until I found something close enough. The bath mat in the bathroom was kind of like a tablecloth, so I had her stand on it and yanked it as hard as I could. Instead of effortlessly slipping out from under her like I expected, her feet flew out from under her with the bath mat, and she slammed her head on the edge of the bathtub. And... she didn't make it. Very long before bursting into tears, my mom rushed in and asked what happened, and I didn't want to get in trouble, so I said that she fell. Which is technically true. Please don't judge me, I feel awful enough. But one of my favorite stories to tell from when I was a kid happened a few years later. One hot summer weekend, my mom installed a brand new ceiling fan in our living room. That doesn't seem important, but stick with me. Not long after, one of my friends and my sister and I were hanging out in the living room, trying to cool off. My mom poked her head in to tell us she was going to run to the post office real quick and would be back in about 10 minutes. A little while after she left, my sister went to the kitchen and grabbed a few cans of soda and a ballpoint pen. She explained to us that the rivet that holds a can's pull tab on is in the exact center of the can, and you can use a pen to punch a hole in it. 
So, she put a hole in the top of a can, covered it with her finger, gave it a little shake, and then drank some soda by shooting it into her mouth. It was kinda cool, and my friend very enthusiastically tried it out for himself. But he shook his can way harder than necessary, and I guess he didn't have great aim because when he went to drink, all he got was a nose full of carbonation. When he pulled his head out of the line of fire, the jet stream just kept going. It absolutely covered the ceiling and my mom's brand new ceiling fan. My sister and I just looked up, frozen in horror, having no idea what to do. Before we could even finish processing what just happened, my mom walked in with a big smile on her face that lasted for about two seconds before shouting, I was gone for 10 minutes! The aftermath of that story is that my friend started crying because my mom yelled at him, and we never spoke again. Also, some of you may know that I hide an ice cream cone in every video, but I'm gonna make things interesting this time around and run a contest. The first person to find it in this video owes me $20. Have fun!